This is tournament time. Either win or you walk. Welcome to Rambler Sports Locker. I'm Shelby. And I'm Eric. On today's episode, the Arch sees a huge upset and some more red shoes. Also, we talked to UNI fans to see what head coach Ben Jacobson means to them. Those stories and more on today's episode of Rambler Sports Locker. with Shelby Kluver. We're here at the Enterprise Center for RSL's coverage of the first two quarterfinal matchups in Arch Madness. Now, Shelby, in the first game, we already had our biggest story of the tournament so far. What happened? That's right. There's already been a huge upset in just the first game of today's plays. Number one seeded University of Northern Iowa fell 77 to 56 against eighth seeded Drake Bulldogs. The Bulldogs took their early lead and held the Panthers to just 11 field goals in the first half. They dominated in both the paint and three-point shots. And by halftime, they were up 43 to 33, led by seven-foot sophomore Liam Robbins. Now, the Panthers did explode out of halftime. They cut the deficit down to just five points and held Drake to merely three points, all in just four minutes, led by sophomore A.J. Green. But it was the free throws that really kept the Panthers in. They were completing 75% of them, as opposed to merely 17% of their three-point shots. But with 12 minutes left in the second half, it was basically over for the Panthers. They went 10 minutes without scoring, leading Drake on an 18-0 run and ending in a 77-56 game. Wow, so it wasn't just it wasn't just an upset, it was a blowout. Basically, yeah. So who were some top players for Northern I or excuse me, for Drake really stood out in this game? Well, and Northern Iowa too. AJ Green, sophomore, he had 19 points and three assists. But it just wasn't enough to overcome the explosive Roman Penn for Drake. The sophomore guard had 26 points, eight rebounds, and eight assists. He was also helped by Liam Robbins, who had another great night. He had 17 points and nine rebounds. Uh, well, thank you so much for the information, Shelby. Drake will play again tomorrow in oh, the yeah. semifinal One game at 2.30. And while the Faves are out of the tournament, it's going to be a really good game. For sure. And our other RSL reporter, Eric Moran, was at the press conference after the game to hear from the uh, upset, victorious Drake Bulldogs. I'm standing here by the court after the number eight seed Drake Bulldogs defeated the number one seed University of Northern Iowa Panthers. Now for Drake, they lost their last three games coming into Arch Madness. And Drake head coach Darren DeVries admitted that this was not the start that he wanted his team to have, but said that he, it was important that he reminded his players, quoting now, every game is just a 40 minute game. UNI head coach Ben Jacobson said, that after the loss, quoting now, today wasn't our best. We've, we've been great for four months. Jacobson also went on to say that the team left possessions on the table, but fundamentally he thought they played well. He was proud, Jacobson was proud of how his team bounced back in the second half, making it a one point game, but unfortunately for the Panthers, they were not able to capitalize. Now Jacobson said this could affect his team's chance at an, an NCAA tournament bid, but either way, whether they get the at-large bid or if they make the NIT, his team is going to prepare either way. For the Rambler Sports Soccer, I'm Eric Moran. Thank you, Eric. Although it was a disappointing loss for Northern Iowa, it was still a great year for the team and their coach, Ben Jacobson. Amelia Ickes caught up with some UNI fans this afternoon to talk about what makes their head coach so special. I'm here during game one where University of Northern Iowa is facing off against Drake University. Now the UNI head coach Ben Jacobson was just named MVC best coach of the year and he spent 14 years with UNI so far. During halftime we had the opportunity to catch up with a former UNI basketball player who talked about the way that Jacobson has changed the culture at UNI. It just was hard to get a, a real uh, you know loud and, 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 and uh, awesome atmosphere. It seems like that the Mondas are really, they're, they're really doing that right now. You know, it's really got uh, a place where guys want to come play, guys want to, uh, you know, fans want to come watch it. Other fans we talked to talked about Jacobson's mentorship and leadership, which allowed the team to multiple NCAA tournament berths and multiple NBC championships. He's just a teacher, and, and great coaches always have one thing in common, and then they're teachers. Uh, they love the game and they want to share that love with the game with the others. And I, that's why I love Coach Jake is because he makes that obvious in everything that he does. He, he's just a great guy. I think he's, if I had a son who is playing basketball, that's who I'd want to coach him. He's a positive guy, you know. 
Win or lose this year at Arch Madness, Jacobson will still be a role model for the people of Cedar Falls, Iowa. For the Rambler Sports Locker, I'm Amelia Ickes. Thanks, Amelia. Now, our second quarterfinal matchup of the afternoon was between the fifth seed, Southern Illinois Saluki, and the fourth seed, Bradley Braves. Our own analyst, Matt Mason, was at the game, another member of the gray suit bandwagon today. That happens. It's a good look, definitely. I appreciate that. And uh, you, were, you, you watched the game, Matt. What did you see? What were the trends of the game? Yeah, so Bradley narrowly came out the win with the win in this game, and they jumped out to a quick 5-0 lead. But just after this, they went one for their next 16 from the field. They went ice cold, but they stuck true to their game, playing tough defense and getting a lot of boards. They out-rebounded the SIU Salukis 43-29. to Going into halftime, they were down two points, but this rebounding and holding uh, the Salukis to 37.5% from the field is what ultimately got them to win. Sounds like a gritty comeback from the Braves. And uh, who were some key players? on Bradley who really uh brought them the win. Yeah, yeah. So Elijah Childs had a great game. He actually joined the 1,000 point club for the Bradley Braves uh, in route to scoring 16 points while gathering nine rebounds. Also, Daryl Brown had a great game. He scored 19 points and 15 of those came in the second half. And that's really something else that Bradley did well is they fed the ball to the hot hand, whether it was Elijah in the first or uh, Brown in the second. They gave the ball to uh, whoever had the hot hand and you know, played that tough defense and got some boards and ultimately got the win. Yeah, I always feel like Daryl Brown is such a killer when it comes to Arch Madness the last few years. He's been really scoring a lot of points in this tournament. And congratulations to Mr. 1000, Elijah Childs, getting to that big milestone in his career. Matt, thank you so much for the knowledge. Now, uh, Shelby Kluver, our other reporter from earlier, was actually at the press conference of this game. She has a recap from what was said by the coaches. I'm down here courtside where Loyola and Valcor are warming up for their game, where over 7,000 people just watched Bradley and Southern Illinois slug it out. At the post-game press conference, Bradley head coach Brian Wardle admitted his team struggled offensively. When it comes to Arch, he says it's all about surviving and overcoming. Last year's Arch champions trailed playing in the second half, but senior Daryl Brown was one of the ones who helped help turn Bradley's game around. He said that when it comes to Arch, last year's experience gave them confidence, but this is a new year with a whole new team. Engineer Elijah Wood Childs chimed in as well, saying that, quote, our offense doesn't determine our defense. And it is worth noting that Brian, that head coach Brian wore his lucky red shoes again for today's game. But he was really quick to tell the press that when it comes to winning, it's all down to his players. Bradley will play again tomorrow against a very hot Drake team at 2.30 in its third semifinal game in three years. Remember Sports Locker, I'm Shelby Kluber. Thanks, Shelby. And RSL reporter Rebecca Van Deventer caught up with fans from both the teams of this matchup earlier today to talk about the big upset of Northern Iowa and what it means for the rest of the tournament field. This is Rebecca Vandevener reporting outside the Enterprise Center in St. Louis, Missouri. Regarding the big upset of Northern Iowa, we went to talk to fans, some of whom were quite surprised, and others thought it demonstrated the strength of the conference as a whole. Pretty, pretty surprised. I thought the conference was pretty tight all year round. I mean, you look at second place and they're all bunched up there, you know, and Northern Iowa just maybe one or two games out in front, you know, and they just, they folded. With Northern Iowa out of the way, Bradley fans think it's down to them and Loyola for the championship. I love it. I love it. Uh, it's going to come down to Loyola and Bradley, in my opinion. Uh, offense versus defense. May the best man win. I don't know. We're going we're gonna to see. Here's the deal. Loyola has beat Bradley twice, and it's hard to beat a team three times. We'll have to see if their predictions ring true. Rebecca Vandevener, Rambler Sports Locker. Thanks, Rebecca. And that's all we have for our first episode of RSL's Friday coverage of the quarterfinals. Tune back in later for our coverage of the next two games and to see what happened to Loyola.